Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for this evening. We thank you, Father, for this time to bring your word. We just thank you for your precious word. And, Father, we thank you for the mighty Holy Spirit who is our teacher. And, Holy Spirit, I just thank you tonight. You would anoint the ears of the hearer that they may hear. That you would give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. That the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened. That we may know what is the hope of your calling for each and every one of us. Unveil and unfold your word to us, Father. And I pray that you would anoint me to teach and preach tonight. In Jesus' name. If y'all can agree with that, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Open up your... Bibles to, I want to touch on something right quick before I get in the message. Go to Romans chapter 10, if you will. I had someone ask me a question last week. I gave him, I shot him an answer right quick. See, it's tough when you're teaching. I don't know about anybody else, but when you're under an anointing, and somebody starts asking questions, it, it breaks that anointing. Amen. It breaks the train of thought. You might as well quit right then, to be honest with you, because it, it's just tough. And uh, he, he kept raising his hand last week, so I went ahead and shot him an answer and went on. But in uh, Romans chapter 10, the question was this, uh, about the Israelis, the children of Israel, that aren't they God's chosen people? Yes, they are. Yes, they were. But they will split hell wide open if they don't accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And that's what I told him. Look in this verse, verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be, everybody say it, that they might, M-I-G-H-T, that they might be saved. Amen. Amen. That right there tells me they may not be saved, but they've got to accept Jesus Christ. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. Now, let's just uh, go over to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. And I want to take a look at verse 3 because I want to see this then we'll get on in to the rest of the message. In Ephesians chapter 1, look. It says, Paul, the apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints which are in Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath, everybody say hath, who hath blessed. Holy, that's past tense, isn't it? Who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Hallelujah. In heavenly places in Christ. Everybody say all. All, all spiritual blessings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, we can get over in Peter's chapter, I think it's First Peter, where he talks about all godliness, everything that pertains to life and to godliness. He's already given us those things. All that's been paid for is, a, you know, the thing about the book of Ephesians, and I'd love to just teach the book of Ephesians, but it, he's constantly using the word half, half putting it past tense, so we can get a hold of the fact that it's already been done. It's already been taken care of. It's ours for the taking, and that's what we got to understand about authority. It is ours. It's been done. It's been taken care of. And we saw last week what Jesus had done to the enemy when he loosed the works of the devil. He destroyed the works of the devil. He just, that word loose from the Greek word lul that means untie. He just unraveled the devil's workings, the principalities, the powers. 
He just wrecked his kingdom. When he did it, he wrecked it. He just loosed it. He didn't annihilate it. He didn't totally destroy the devil as we you know, know there's other words that mean annihilation, but that word doesn't mean annihilation. It means to loose. And he just untied the works of the devil. Hallelujah. Well, that to me is a blessing. Amen. That tells me they're in disarray. They might have been a fine-tuned bunch at once upon a time, but they're not now. They're probably still reeling from what happened. You know, I don't know if you've ever had something, everything's going good, and all of a sudden something went bad, and you just seem like you never recovered from it. You just wonder, what in the world happened? It was going so good. Well, that's the way the devil felt. He th- you know, everything was going so good. He went to the cross. We got him crucified. We got him in hell. We've got him all locked up. It's over. And I remember a song by the Coasters. And then, and then, then along came Jones. But then along came God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And just blew that thing all to bit. And they just never recovered from it. You got to get this, we all have to get this in our thinking, and it needs to be a forever settled subject. When you think about the devil, he's defeated. He, he is a defeated foe. He's under my feet, and that's where he is, and I got to keep him there. Amen. Amen. And so, once we get that, our mind renewed to that fact, walking in authority will be a lot easier for you because we've got that authority and that's what we've been preaching on the last couple of weeks. So I want you to go, if you will, to, uh, we want to go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, hallelujah. And this is, uh, been my main text, chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new species. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And something you need to understand, when you got born again, when that says new, he's talking about spiritually new. How many of y'all know your mind didn't change? Did your body change? You got to say, if you were big, you were big. If you were skinny, you were skinny. There's nothing on the outside change. You might have looked a little different because you just got blessed and the Spirit of God come to live on the inside of you. But your mind wasn't renewed. You know, I've told you all the story once upon a time, the guy that I went to the Lord down, I went to Brother Brian's mission and preached, and this guy got saved. And I said, well... Would you like to come to church with me on Sunday? And he said, yes, sir, I would. So I said, I'll come by and pick you up at so-and-so time, and I'll take you to church. Well, when we got to, I went by to pick him up. He, had, he was out there smoking a cigarette and had a headset on listening to rock and roll music, just like he always did. He accepted Christ. His mind, he didn't know what a Christian was. He'd never been in a church. And so, all the way there, he's listening to his rock and roll. He ain't smoking in my car, but he, <laughs> he's listening to that rock and roll when we get there. You know, he wants to smoke one before he goes in and goes in. And I said, man, you need to remove your, we don't need you to be listening to that kind of music while you're here. But see, he didn't know what go, went on in church. He didn't know anything. All they knew was, I don't want to go to hell and I, will, I want to accept Jesus. That's all he knew. Well, what got born again was the inward man, the inward man of the heart, the spirit man. The mind has to be renewed. The body will be the last thing. Are you all with me? Now, so it says become a new species. And all things, verse 18, all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation to witness that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, 
and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation. That's con been committed to who? You and me. If we don't get the job done, nobody is. If the church doesn't get out and tell people about Christ, it's not going to happen. But that's our jobs as ambassadors for Christ. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God, for he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. If you're born again today, you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Everybody say, if you're born again, say this. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I remember after I got born again, got baptized in the Holy Ghost, I was still in the Baptist church, and the man of God, I loved the pastor. He was a tremendous man of God. But he, he got up one night and was teaching on Wednesday night like this from uh, uh, talking about our righteousness. He was teaching this right here. And he said, but our righteousness is as filthy rags. I said, I'm thinking to myself, I said, brother, you just read that we were the righteousness of God in Christ. But the traditions of men had told him, say, that, that I'm unrighteous. That my righteousness is a filthy rags. But it's not true. When you got born again, you became the righteousness of God in Christ. Matter of fact, the Bible says that he made unto us, and that word made means create unto us, wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. He gave it all to us when we got born again. Amen. You may not have wanted to have been sanctified, but you are. <laughs> Amen. When you accepted Christ, He created a new spirit within you, and, it, and you were sanctified, set apart for God's exclusive right. use. Amen. That's right. When you got born again, you were set apart for His exclusive use. Hallelujah. You've been bought with a price. You belong to Him. If you're born again, we belong to Him. Amen. We were bought by the blood. He bought us. Amen. Hallelujah. We were slaves unto sin, and He bought us with His blood. Amen. Lee Berger, boom, you're mine. <laughs> and now from here on, you're to serve me. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Now, we may not do it. We may not want to follow that, but I don't want to tell you what. Your life, now listen to me, you need to understand when we were servants of sin, serving the enemy, we only had that, that, you know, we served him and we had that thing going on with him. We were over in the kingdom of darkness and, and man, I tell you what, uh, it says it's fun for a season. Well, it was fun for a season, <laughs> My season was a long season, too. I mean, years and years and years. But, but then, once I came to God, turned it all over to Him, now, see, now I'm dealing with this right here. Now, He, the enemy, the kingdom of darkness, didn't want to let me go. Now I got the Holy Ghost over here leading me this way and the devil trying to pull me back that way. Now I got to make a decision. Am I going to give this up? Because I got born again. That doesn't mean, every, you know, all those nights when I got drunk every night and doing this and doing that, you know. That was a habit. Those habits had to be broken. That's why I was saying. My spirit man was right with God, but my mind was still thinking that other way. It's 5 o'clock. What am I going to do? I mean, at 5 o'clock, what, what am I going to do? A a am I, you know, going to keep doing what I've always done, or what am I going to do? Well, bless God, thank God that I began to follow and just went right on in. And, and on Wednesday night, I started going to church on Sunday mornings, I tell you, immediately Sunday morning, boom. And I was in there Sunday morning. I got in there for Sunday school and went to church, went to training union. I was instantly a star Baptist because I went to training union. 
Amen. I told my wife, as soon as I'm eligible to be a, a deacon, they'll, they'll call me and to, I'll be a deacon, you want. Because I was given number one, but I was there for Sunday school and training union. I knew in a year's time, as soon as I'm eligible, they'll make me a deacon, you want. And they did too. I'm telling you, one year or two, when I was eligible, boom, do you mind if we put you on there and let them vote on you to be a I no more needed to be a deacon than the man in the moon. I mean, you need... I didn't need to be leading anybody. But the thing was, they were hurting so bad for people that knew anything about the word that I was as good as anyone else. And I went to training union, so that put me a step up. See? Amen. Because if y'all were Baptists, how many of y'all went training union? Amen. Hallelujah. And I went training union until I got in a couple of arguments with them. Well, you know, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost and I'm still going. I never will forget Mark chapter 16. 15 through 20. No, Brother Lee. It is not in there. I said, well, why don't we just get the scissors out? Now, I'm telling you, that's what I told him. I said, well, why don't we just get the scissors out and cut that out of our Bibles? And while we're at it, we might as well cut out 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14. About them their tongues. I was not a big hit. It wasn't long I went and resigned from my deaconship. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hadn't been a deacon since. Hadn't been a deacon since. <laughs> then Matthew 28, 18. We another familiar scripture and we've looked at that 28.18 hallelujah I got over on that and didn't need to 28.18 and Jesus came and spake unto them and said all power and that's the word exousia which means authority is given unto me in heaven and earth go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Now, it's self-understood here, and I wouldn't catch any argument from most theologians that that meant that when the power came to Jesus, the power came to the church. Because he's the head, and we're the body. We're not, we're not the tail. There may be some tails. You know what I mean? People that don't know any better. Exousia means the power of one whose will and command must be obeyed. So what is authority? Authority, number one, is delegated power. And in our case, the church has the power of God that God has delegated to you and me. And then exousia, which is, means the power of one whose will and command must be obeyed. Now, when I lay hands on people or pray for people, I'm commanding things. I don't care if people fall out or not because authority does not is, is totally different from dunamis. Dunamis just knock your socks off. But I can take authority over sickness. I can take authority over disease. I can take authority over problems, demonic spirits, without any power per se being manifested because authority overrides power now dunamis will drive it out of the body but you know like he did with the fig tree that day when Jesus walking down and he sees a fig tree he speaks to it he uses exousia on that fig tree and that fig tree dies we don't see 
or see any way where it said that that fig tree, that when he spoke to it, that fig tree just uprooted and flew a half mile down the road. We don't see that, do we? Now, if that dunamis had been in activation and he would have spoke to it like he did the winds and the waves and different things, you would have seen a manifestation of the dunamis power of God. The miracle working ability of God. But we're talking about authority. And the, our Lord stripped the devil of his authority. The devil has no authority to operate on this planet. Are you with me? He has no authority. We have the authority. We've been given that authority. Let me show you something right quick. I, I had this later on in the my notes, but go to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Now, when I exercise and I speak to the... If, if the Holy Ghost decides that's what we need to do, I don't know if you've ever cast devils out of somebody, but I didn't always feel a tremendous amount of power. And I asked the guy that mentored me, and he said, Lee, it's in faith, it's not in... So much work. Because I asked him, how many days did you pray to get ready for a deliverance session? He said, none. He says, I call them out by faith and they got to come out. He had faith in his words which exercised authority. Are y'all listening to me? Y'all looking at me so strangely? I mean, that's authority. Authorities cut loose and... Exercise through words. Our words have power. Hallelujah. I love the feeling of when the dunamis comes flowing through. Oh, I love it. Especially the tangible dunamis of God. Hallelujah. Go to uh, Luke. Y'all at Luke chapter 10? But this, huh? 10, 19. Yes, sir. Now, let, let's go ahead and take a look here at uh, verse 1. It says, And these things the Lord appointed the other seventy also, and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place. Now, I want you to see this here because this is so good. Good evangelists send out prayer teams and evangelistic teams and everything ahead of them before they get there. And that's what Jesus did. Here it is right here. Notice what it says. He sent them two by two before his face into every city and place whether he himself would come. So they, they're already doing their thing. They're doing their praying. They're doing deliverances. They're doing work in the city, preparing it before Jesus ever gets there. That just is a blessing to me. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. You ever felt like that? Carry neither purse nor script nor shoes and salute no man by the way. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be into this house. Notice that. They had ability to come into a house and speak peace to that house if the people were willing to accept them. When we go into somebody's house, we have that ability to bring peace into that household. Because there are houses you can go in and there's no peace there and you know it's not there because you can just tell it's in the air. The atmosphere is so strong yeah, and harsh. They may have been arguing. They might have been fighting. But we can come in. If they will accept us, we can come in and say, Peace to this house. Hallelujah. See, the key about learning about authority is operating in authority in your daily life, everywhere you go, being a blessing to people, taking authority over this, speaking this with authority. See, authority is not just removing devils. Authority is speaking good things, speaking blessings into people's lives. Amen. 
doing good. But um, once we get a, you, in your mind, it gets your mind renewed to the fact what we really are in Christ. Once we get that fixed in our mind, that I have this ability in me, I have this authority operating in me, and we realize just how important this authority is. We've seen for two weeks a lot of things I'm not going to cover tonight. But but we come on down here to verse 9, and he says, And heal the sick therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. But into whatever city you enter, and they receive you not, go your ways out into the streets of the same and say, Even the very dust of your city, which cleaveth on us, we do wipe off against you, notwithstanding, be ye sure of this, that the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. That's Jesus. That's the head of the church. We have a mentality, we want to try to get everybody saved, and regardless if they're kicking and screaming, we still want to go after them. We still want to try to get them saved. But Jesus told them in whole cities, walk out into the streets, shake the dust off, and go on. Are y'all with me? But it's His will that all be saved. But how many of y'all know they all aren't? Hallelujah. I better get on down. Look at verse 17. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. That impressed them. And he said unto them, and that's just, I like to always put it this way, and, the, and Jesus says, that ain't nothing. Let me tell you what I saw. I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Now understand the position that Jesus is coming from. He knows the devil for what he is because he saw him kicked out of heaven, traveling at the speed of light, heading down to earth. You've heard of a kicking? Well, he got one. A, a country boy. Yes, sir. At the speed of light. It said light, lightning. Look at verse 19. Behold, I give you power. That's authority. I give you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions. These are both representative of the kingdom of darkness. Serpents and scorpions, and over all of the dunamis of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. This for the cross. Remember this. This for the cross. This for Jesus whipped him. He had miracle working power. He had dunamis. But he gave them authority over that dunamis. Because authority exudes you over rise dunamis. Y'all with me? And that's what he's given us is that exusia. To override the dunamis. But here's the thing. Now that Jesus has been whipped, he's stripped of all that. The devil, I mean, what I say? Did I really? Forgive me, Jesus. Forgive me. The devil, then. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, go back up to verse 19 just for a second. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. The word uh, here is patio, P-A-T-E-O. And for the word tread. And it means, he was describing how the Roman soldiers had those spikes in their shoes and how they would stand at attention. 
And everywhere they went, they made a path from those spikes pulling up the dirt as they went. And that's what he was talking about over the enemy. That's what we should be doing is treading, see, over the enemy. Just over his, you know, constant. Where is he? He's under our feet. We should be treading on him, making a path over him because we have come over him and stepped on him and stomped on him so many times. It just leaves a path. Have you ever been, you can see high weeds but then see a path through the weeds? You know why that's there? Because somebody has walked through there over and over and over and over and over again. And that's what we need to do and that's the way Jesus wanted it for you and me to where when we tread over the enemy so much, it's just a path. It's a natural thing to do is to walk over the enemy, to have victory over him because we're so accustomed to exercising our authority over the enemy. Can y'all say amen? amen? That's the mindset that we should have. Now the devil we know is a defeated foe. In 1 John 3, 8 it says, For this purpose, for this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy, loose the works of the devil. And he did that. He unloosed the works of the enemy. Then in Acts 10, 38 we saw that how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of who? The devil. For God was with him. What is sickness? It's demonic oppression. It's the devil oppressing your body, oppressing your mind. It is never of God. Say it with me. It's never of God. Listen to me. It's not God's will for you to be sick. It's not God's will for you to be in pain. It's not in God's will. But see, you got people, denominational people, all kinds of people, I guess even in charismatic circles, you've got people that think it's God's will for them to be sick. And they will go to the doctor to get out of God's will. <laughs> Amen? Amen? And yet they'll pray, oh Lord, let, you know, thy will be done. And then they'll go to the doctor to get out of God's will because they believe sickness is of God. God has put this on me. It's God's will that I be sick to teach me a lesson. Then they go to the doctor to get out of God's will. I never have understood that. that that's ignorance. Amen. I mean, it's ignorance gone to seed. That's just... Crazy. But that's people. That's church people. Amen. Now, we'll forget the day God told me. He said, Lee, he said, people are people. That's pretty profound, God. He said, never forget that. People are just people. Because if you ever think that we're anything else, you're wrong. We're spirit-filled, but we're still people. We're still in this body. We still got this mind. What a wonderful mind it is. 1 John 4, 4 said, Greater is he that is in me. Everybody say that. Greater is he that's in me. Than he that's in the world. The greater one lives in you. The greater one lives in me. Say the greater one. Lives in me. You got to get a hold of that. The greater one lives in me. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And we proved that when we looked through and saw over there in First uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 1 where he talked about far above principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The greater one lives in me. We should never live below what the Bible says that we can live. We're to live 
a victorious life. Are you with me? Just because symptoms come to you don't mean you got to keep them. Hello? Just because sickness comes don't mean, just because pain comes to your head don't mean you got to have a headache. Listen to me now. You do not have to have a headache. Somebody say that. I don't have to have headaches. You don't have to have them. I pass up probably five, ten times a week. That thing will try to come right here. No, you got to go in Jesus' name. Gone. But I've been practicing that for 30 something years now. I know, I know, because I don't get headaches. Y'all with me? Well, when that comes, I practiced it from the day. One that I ever heard that I didn't have to have headaches. God told me that. You don't have to have headaches. I said, I received that. And I started doing exactly what they told me to do. Been doing it for 30 years. And that is one thing I got victory over. Are you with me? I may not have victory over all of it, but I got victory over a good bit of it. When those symptoms of a cold start coming, uh-uh. I go do what I can do in the natural, and I start that confession running. Y'all with me? Not going to have it. No, uh-uh. I'm the healed of God. And I'll pump vitamin C in me. And start doing those things. Hallelujah. But you don't have to have it. So I don't have to have it. Because I, I have authority over sickness and disease. Then we saw in Colossians 2.15, time goes so fast when you're having fun. But I want to go over that one more time. Colossians 2.15. Huh? Colossians 2 and 15. And it says, Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. And we explained all that out. That he, when he put the whipping on him, he stripped him down. He stripped down the principalities. He stripped down the powers. They were naked running through heaven. Or the outskirts of heaven. Through the heavenlies. But he had stripped them down. They had, they didn't have anything left. He put a whipping on him that all of heaven rejoiced. That's why we rejoice. We should celebrate in here on Sundays, man. We should celebrate every time we think about what he's done for us. How he has put a whipping on him. We have a defeated foe that comes against us, but we have victory. We have that anointing. Now, go with me to Ephesians chapter 2, and let's take a look at this tonight. So we know what authority is. We know that we have victory over the enemy. He's a defeated foe. His whole kingdom was loosed by Jesus. But we are seated with Christ. Look at verse 1. And you hath, everybody say hath, hath. he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. That word quickened means made alive. Who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world. How many of y'all know that? I know Dan did. I read your book. According to the prince of the power of the air. According to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. That's where we all were. Y'all don't look at me so pious. Y'all were all like that. Among whom also we all had our 
uh, conversation or lifestyle in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God. Everybody say, but God. But God. Turn to your neighbor and say, but God. But God. But God. I like the buts in the Bible, I tell you. But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us even when we were dead in sins hath made us alive together with Christ. By grace are ye saved and hath raised us up together. Say raised me up. He has raised the church up together. You need to understand, we were dead in trespasses and sin. We were in Christ when He went to the cross. We were dead in our trespasses and sin. But when He was raised up, we were raised up with Him. That's what it says. Paul had understanding of this. We need to get understanding of this. That we've been raised up. We're not that worm and a dog. We're not that, you know what the devil tries to tell you are. You're not even what you try to tell you are. We've been raised up. We're to be seated on the right hand of the Father in all His majesty and glory. Seated with Him. Hallelujah. In heavenly places. Glory to God. He hath raised us up together and made us sit together. So you might as well get used to sitting next to one another and loving on one another because when the time comes, we're all going to be seated together. Amen. Amen. But he says we're, that's where we belong. That's the way God looks at you and me. We're seated on the right hand of the Father in Christ. He's the head where the body, where the head is, that's where the body goes. Y'all with me? If we don't get an understanding of that, we got to be picturing ourselves that way. He's the head, but bless God, I'm the body. Now, whatever part I am in that body, you know, whatever it is, I need to be a good one. Amen. And when other parts of the body needs help, if I can help them, I need to help them. Now let me tell you something. See, there's a lot of hands in this place. There's people that get hands. If you're real handy and you know how to do stuff, you're probably a hand in the body of Christ. You're probably in the ministry of helps and you're willing to help. To lend a hand when somebody needs it. Amen. Most ministers, you may be eyes, you may be a mouth. You got people that are ears. They listen. Have you ever ran across people that listen? Mercy people, they'll listen to you. Hallelujah. But everybody's a different part of the body. God brings all these people in. A pastor can only look, "Mm mm-hmm, there's this or that. You don't have to be here long before he realizes what you is what you is. And he has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works. He said, any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in those good works. Good works. Everybody say good works. Good works. That ain't bad works. That's good works. Good works. Hallelujah. Good works. Walk in them. Hallelujah. Now I don't know about you. But when I begin to picture myself where I belong, you begin to talk a little different. 
See, when you begin to realize and get a revelation of, bless God, I, I'm the body of Christ. I have the authority of God. It's been given unto me. I'm in Christ. I'm seated in heavenly places. I've been given everything that, that pertains to life, the zoe of God. That word life is zoe and godliness. Hallelujah. Well, you can begin to talk differently. When you begin to talk the way God sees us, that's what confession is all about. Confess what God says about us. Amen. Say the same thing that God says. Amen. Amen. God says I'm healed. I don't care what anybody else says. I don't care what you want to say about me. God says I'm healed. I'm delivered. I'm set free. I'm blessed. Amen. Going in and coming. In the city, in the field. I'm a blessed man. That's why the pastor and everybody say I'm blessed. Whether you understand it or not, just I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I had somebody say something to me. <laughs> he said, you're supposed to say you, you're blessed and highly favored. And I said, I say what I want to say. <laughs> Some days I don't feel blessed. <laughs> Amen, brother. He is what he is. Hallelujah. But we're seated with Christ at the right hand of God. That's the place of authority. Matter of fact, I read this. It said it is the central headquarters of all power and all the universes in creation is at the right hand of God the Father. They were all created by Him, wasn't they? Huh? For Him. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now go to 1 Corinthians 12. I want you to see this. I just... Everybody say authority. authority. I have authority. I walk in it. Look at verse chapter 12, verse 12. For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. Now you'll have people that are trying to tell you there's only one baptism, right? There's only one baptism. But that baptism, there's only one baptism into the body of Christ. Because they'll try to say it's water baptism. No, it's one baptism into the body of Christ. Hallelujah. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have, have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. And I'm not going to get into whether you're a foot and da 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 But go over to chapter 6. Chapter 6, look at verse 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one Spirit. Now isn't that good? He that is joined to the Lord is of one spirit. Jesus and me is one spirit. Nothing separate there. That's why I'm in Christ. See, when we begin to see ourselves the way God sees us, He sees us in Christ. Well, how did Jesus walk his planet? Do this, do this, do that. I mean, he was speaking to storms. He was speaking to this. He'd tell fish to jump in the boat. I mean, and that's what says. 
throw, throw your net on the other side, and he's probably saying, okay, I want 50 of you in the net now. <laughs> Amen. 75. All right, 75. The father probably said, no, nah, I give him 75. All right, 75 of you in the boat. Amen. He had that kind of authority. He could speak to everything. And it would obey. And then when he sent the 12 out, he told them the same thing. He said, go in my authority. And they went. And they were amazed at the people getting healed, delivered, and set free. And the devils were subject unto them. Then he sent the 70 out. And the 70, we read, they come back and they're, man, they just blown away by, even the devils are subject unto us. People were getting healed, delivered, and set free, just like Jesus. So he did it. The 12 did it. He gave them his authority. He gave his authority to the 70. And then in Mark chapter 16, he gave that authority. Well, we read the authority in Matthew 28, but he told them in Mark 16, 15 through 20, go. And he said, cast out devils. Told them the same stuff. Cast out devils. Heal the sick. Are y'all with me? He did not change. It's been the same from the beginning. Jesus has said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him for over in Luke 4, 18, for a certain reason. And then the 12 went out doing the same thing. The 70 went out doing the same thing. Then Jesus told the disciples, go out and do the same thing. He told the church, do the very same thing. What are we supposed to be doing? Same authority, same spirit, because there's that one spirit, and we're to go out and do the same thing using the same spirit and the same authority. Amen. Every Christian. Every Christian. You get a church believing that way. At least they'll do is go out and try it. Well, let's try this out. So, and there's nothing like doing it. And the more you do it, the more you see it work, the more you want to do it. Amen. Can't wait to do it. I want to tell you, when I was down in Guyana, and that first night, there was 40 of them. Their bags, they lined up across there. And, 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 and I just, I feel the Holy Ghost. And I hit this one and, and that one. And then before I know it, they were just all going down. I was just watching them go. I'm not even touching them or nothing. And they all hitting the floor too. Boom, boom. Boom, it was in a gymnasium that had a, 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 well, it wasn't even wood. It was uh, dirt. And they laid out across there. The missionary's eyes this big around because he's thinking they all done broke their back instead of getting healing. <laughs> so they got them up. They got them all up. And, they, and, I, and I said, well, ask them. If they're healed, if you're healed, raise your hand. They all raise their hand. Yes, we're healed. God had healed every one of them. I didn't do nothing. I just started boom, 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 and all I know, Holy Ghost said, you too slow, baby, <laughs> and went on down and took care of it all. I mean, you know, he's <laughs> I take authority over that. Over that spirit. That foul spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the point being, I couldn't wait to preach the next night. I can't wait to preach. I can't wait to see what God's going to do next, see. Well, that's the way our life should be every day, every day, every day. Amen. We get up. Bless God, I got the authority of God. I'm ready to go exercise that authority. I'm ready to go out and see what God's going to do today. Everybody say, I got authority. I got authority. Hallelujah. On this planet. Hallelujah. Everybody stand up. I got authority. Glory to God. 
Now, last week I ended with talking about submission and authority. I didn't want to do that tonight. That is not, what, not always a shouting sermon. You start talking about submission. That's normally something the pastor ought to teach. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, I'm a child of God. I'm blood ball. Spirit filled. Tongue talking. Devil casting at him. Child of the king. I have authority against the enemy. I have authority flowing through my body, flowing through my mind. And because of that, I have the ability to speak the mountain. And command them to be removed. And they must obey me. And so when I hear from God. And he tells me what to do. I won't fear. I'll walk by faith. And not by sight. And I'll take that step of faith. And I'll do what he tells me to do. Because I got authority. On this planet. And he'll back it up. And he'll do what he wants to do. If I'll just obey him. So I purpose in my heart. To obey him. To do what he tells me to do. And we'll see great and mighty things. We'll see him saved. We'll see him healed. We'll see him delivered. We'll see him set free. We'll see. The miracle working power of God. Every day. Every day. Every day. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Every day. Every day. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 